dear friends <clears throat> we are now expanding the scope of our uh, discussion on right to life article 21 of our cost right to life and liberty and you all know the most innovated through the process of judicial interpretation there is an expansive scope has been given to right to life and it is declared as the precious of the most precious fundamental rights is right to life and to protect that right, the court using writ uh, jurisdiction can go to any extent, even to overrule the doctrine of separation of powers. And uh, it happened to Kishwar Jahan in uh, West Bengal case, where the CBI is empowered to take over the case. That will come back. Now you can say, these are all evolved over a period of interpretation by the Constitutional Bench of Honorable Supreme Court. And uh, expansive interpretation uh, is right to privacy, is a fundamental right. Right to go abroad is a fundamental right. Right to shelter is a fundamental life. Right against solitary confinement. Right to social justice and economic empowerment is a fundamental right. Right against handcuffing. Right against custodial death right against delayed execution, right for to have doctor's assistance to protect your life, right against public hanging, protection of cultural heritage, right to pollution, free water and air, right of every child to uh, grow fully a developed child, right to education and protection of under trials. Many things from starting from A.K. Gopalan's case, uh, through the process, uh, very landmark judgments uh, were delivered by Honorable Supreme Court. You can see some of the most important thing, if you can remember, it's uh, repeatedly quoted. We'll discuss one by one. A.K. Gopalan's case in 1950. And uh, uh, may I, the, you can see most of the dissenting judgments became later the order of the day. A.K. Gopalan's case, uh, the fair procedure, and uh, they, the, as good, the Supreme Court went with the government and uh, only Fazil Ali has taken a different stand. And that became the order of the day after 15, 16 years when Manaka Gandhi is, uh, has come in and the uh, fundamental rights and Olga Telly's, uh, Nikrishnan and many other cases. Now we are now going to take up a discussion individually on this uh, Privacy, right of privacy, is it a fundamental right? Fundamental right means when the judgments are delivered by the Honorable Supreme Court, there will be uh, observations, obitur dicta will be there. And then there is a conclusive ratio that will be decided. So when the ratio decides, yes, uh, right to life means uh, what we have discussed, and uh, those such things, once they decide that, that becomes a ratio and it will become part of the thing. We have seen that right to information is one of the rights of uh, 19, Article 19. It's an expansive and that became an act. See, the difference is, as we saw in the previous judgment also, only when that is concluded as a fundamental right, for example, in uh, L.K. Ratna versus ICI, the Honorable Supreme Court analyzed what happens when a disciplinary action is taken against a professional in an arbitrary manner, how it is going to impact his career, his reputation. And the reputation is found most uh, fundamental of this, uh, the, uh, these things. You know, a person's more than money, life, or reputation is precious. When the declaration like that comes, you get a compensation for that. And the persons who are doing that with a malfeasant intention can be punished. That is the purpose of our discussion. Here, the Justice case, Puttaswami versus Union of India. And uh, whether... It is a cornerstone of right to privacy where the Honorable Supreme Court declared a nine-judge bench unanimously reaffirm the right to privacy as a fundamental right under the Constitution. You understand? 
But then earlier to that, uh, specifically there is nothing to give you. Like this discussion, what we are saying uh, earlier case, uh, Kushal Kaucher, Kunal Kishore versus State of UP. And uh, the question Puttaswamiji, Justice Puttaswamiji raised the issue with the case beginning whether right to privacy was a fundamental right which was raised in the argument 2015 concerning the legal validity of other other card data, database. Now the Attorney General appearing for the state argued that the existence of right to privacy as a fundamental right was in doubt. In view of the two decisions in case of MP Sharma versus Satish Chandra, District Magist Magistrate, 1954, rendered by an agent bench, Karak Singh was a state of Uttar Pradesh, rendered by six judge bench. Both the cases, the state argued, contained observations that the constitution did not specifically protect the right to privacy as a fundamental right. You see, here you can see the difference. What is the judgment in the Puttaswamy's case, nine bench? Because eight bench judge already has been there. Now the nine judge bench has declared that right to privacy is a fundamental right. So therefore, you can always, that means you get rights. You are, nobody should uh, uh, violate your that right. That is, in case of violation, then you have a right. Constitutional thought can be enforced on them. So, this case is a culmination of several judgments, several discussions, which are basically in the form of a, a discussion, but not decided as a ratio. Even though smaller benches have decided, but then uh, and this is a judgment of a eight judge bench, whereas two judge benches are saying, yes, it is a fundamental right. So, they need a conclusive uh, definition on this whether right of privacy is a fundamental right. And the nine judge bench in the case of Puttaswamy have taken that stand. Now, the right to privacy is inextricably bound up with, the, with all exercises of human liberty, both as it is specifically enumerated across part three and as it is guaranteed in the residue under article 21. It is distributed across the various articles in part three and muta mutandis takes the form of a, whichever of their enjoyment is, its violation, violation curtails. That is the discussion. So we understand what amounts that. Now the issue of uh, conclusive judgment of nine judge bench of uh, Honorable Supreme Court which declared a right to privacy is a fundamental right was the result of the petition filed by a Justice Case Puttaswam. With respect to the other card, uh, Unique Identification Authority of India, UDAI, the 12-digit identification number issued by UDAI to the residents of India. The other project was linked with self several welfare schemes with a view to streamline the process of service delivery and remove false beneficiaries. And uh, now the issue is, as we already explained, there's no clear-cut uh, decision, authenticative decision, that uh, prior right to privacy is a fundamental right. The larger bench up to eight judge benches or six judge benches, they only made a, a passing reference, not decided it as a ratio because the issue was whether to declare, like uh, in a Puttaswamy's case, uh, it is very clear that he wanted a right to privacy to be declared as a fundamental right. And then the court has declared by a unanimous verdict. But that that was not the case in the eight judge, six judge judgments. But the lower courts, our MP Sharma, Karak Singh cases, they were saying, yes, 
uh, it is a fundamental right. See, there's a difference. The uh, superior bench did not uh, decide, but then lower benches were saying, though the the uh, the six and eight major member bench judge, they have said that, but not ratio was not decided. But these people were deciding the ratio. So therefore, the attorney general appearing, appearing for the government took that stand. There needs to be conclusive decision. We cannot rely upon these judgments because they are lesser number judgments, whereas the senior other things have not been conclusively decided in that favor. So, therefore, the constitution bench, the matter was referred to nine judge bench to decide whether the, the issue, that's all, whether the right to privacy was a fundamental right under part three of the constitution. That's all. Now, <clears throat> this is what we have discussed about all that, uh, various judgments. Now, the petitioner's argument is they wanted to have a multi-dimensional model of privacy as a fundamental right. While the respondent stated that the right to privacy was an ambiguous concept and could only be crystallized as a statutory and common law rights, not a fundamental right. Fundamental rights are superior to statutory rights. Statutory rights are those rights given by the statutes. And the common law rights, you know, the further less. The petitioners argued that the constitution would have to be read in line with the preamble, while keeping in mind that privacy was a natural right and an international human right. Uh, whereas the respondents advocated for a narrow approach which focused on the constitution as the repository of fundamental rights. And it is the parliament which can decide as the power to decide on the basis of legislation. To modify uh, amendments to the constitution can be done by them. That is the next discussion. What was the Honorable Supreme Court analyzed all the previous judgments and uh, um, because of which the matter was referred to a larger bench of nine judges. After analyzing all these things, as you all know that constitution is an organic document. It has to be, so many things are changing. Uh, we never knew that uh, this sort of Udai will be there. And uh, so we have to take that into consideration to serve the society. Uh, the, at the same time, laws also should be progressive in nature, balancing all possible issues. So here now they have decided that uh, right to privacy is a fundamental right. Nobody can just barge into your house. Nobody can talk against you, talk your personal matters, and uh, you keep on commenting. So, the right to privacy is protected already, right to life, personal liberty, and the freedoms guaranteed under part three of our constitution. The bench established that the privacy was not an elitist construct, only rich people know. It rejected the argument of the attorney general that the right to privacy must be forsaken in the larger interest of welfare entitlements provided by the state. So the state is saying, we are not doing anything wrong. We want information about the person so that we link it. We want to ensure that the welfare schemes reach the poor, the intended objects. Uh, that is the concept of it. It's also correct. But at the same time, your entire personal things are going to the uh, the state and then it gets spread everywhere. Everything, everybody knows about you. So how to balance it? That is the discussion. <clears throat> but then the Honorable Supreme Court said, yes, right to privacy is uh, right to life, no doubt part of it, but it is not absolute in nature. And uh, the judgment also gave an overview of the standard of judicial review that must be applied in cases of intrusion by state in the privacy of an individual. Suppose the police are surveilling your house. That means they're intruding into your privacy. Can the state do? Again, there is a conflict in the interest of state as versus uh, 
private individuals fundamental rights that is always the balancing factors so the invasion into your personal life can be curtailed i mean uh, it's not absolute right restricted threefold requirement one is law as required under law which postulates the existence of law because um, normally you know in ak gopalan's case itself the due process the procedure established under the law then whether natural justice has to be looked into read into it is the issue then the uh, the bench uh, majority took the view that natural justice is an abstract concept we don't know what is exactly that whereas um, fazil ali took the stand no no natural justice ingrained is not is a part of every law that is enforceable particularly when it concerns the fundamental rights so legality when there is there should be an existence law because at that point in time ak gopalan's case procedure established under law and that means procedure says you take ak 40 right for ak 40 uh, ak guns and then you uh, when the person is asked question if he's not replying shoot him so you go there with the gun he doesn't reply shoot him so uh, there should be natural justice ingrained into it for exercising a tyrannical power without any justice that becomes uh, terrible a dictatorship it will become so the need defined in terms of legitimate state aim why do you need that law which restricts the uh, barging into your house uh, policing uh, the surveillance etc etc where you are watched continuously what you do in your uh, private life which is a very serious offense understand now we saw it also in telangana the ksr government started really hearing the what is happening all that things a very serious uh, issues that is and need defined in terms of legitimate state aim that all justiciable no when you say judicial review uh, this particular thing is violated the court will look into it you know then proportionality which ensures rational nexus between the objects and the means adopted to achieve them and the disproportionate like particularly in case of punishment a person uh, fi the uh, finds that he is drinking smoking once immediately you cut his nose or uh, lips there are disproportionate uh, punishments and uh, justice kaul added a fourth uh, uh, limb to the test which mandated procedural guarantees against the abuse of such interference there need to be procedural guarantees and justice j chalameshwar held that the standard of compelling state interest was only to be used in privacy claims which deserve strict scrutiny as for other privacy claims he held that the just fair and reasonable standard and article 21 would apply according to his judgment the application of the compelling state interest standard would depend on the context of the case the honorable supreme court also emphasized the fact that sexual orientation uh, sexual orientation was an essential facet of privacy it further discussed the negative and positive content of right to privacy whether the state was not only restrained from committing an intrusion upon the right but was also obligated to take necessary measures to protect you understand so beautiful points intrusion and protection of privacy of an individual the judgment held informational privacy to be a part of right to privacy the court while noting the need for the data protection left into left it in the domain of the parliament to legislate on the subject so we'll go into further into various other things um the selvi was a state of karnataka 2010 joseph shine was a union of india 2018 uh, recognizing the equal right to marry that uh, L lgbtqia persons in india so continued constitutional then we'll go deeper into it these are all summaries i am discussing 
we are going to go deep into it. Then we'll summarize so that you get the expert knowledge on the Constitution. Thank you.